I've got a bone to pick with Super Mario Kart. Putting iconic characters into a go-kart became so influential we've had to endure Muppets, M&Ms and even this fat ginger prick racing around tracks and it's been nothing but shovelware and pointless cash grabs ever since. We all know that nothing can ever come close to the quality of the Mario Kart series. Also I thought, now I think Super Mario Kart has aged like warm piss but everybody loves its successor Mario Kart 64. This is where the kart racing genre we know was truly born. The golden age of kart racing and where competition truly started pouring in. It didn't even take a year until arguably Nintendo's best developer at the time, Rareware, created Diddy Kong Racing. Now which of these kart races are better? Well obviously, the best one is... <coughs> the Nintendo 64 wasn't the only console on the market. A new competitor would not only rival the N64, but sales-wise, completely eclipse the system. No! You thought I'd be comparing Diddy Kong Racing to Sonic R. I'm of course talking about the PlayStation, which was a huge hit, and their biggest rival to Mario was without a doubt, Crash Bandicoot. So as you can imagine, even this mental marsupial ended up with his own racing game. Out of these three kart racers, which one is the best? Well, that's what I aim to find out. And just to be clear, I did not grow up with a single one of these series, so there will be no bias at all. I'll be awarding points based on these categories, with these categories awarding bonus points. Because let's be honest, music is important, but it's not as important to a kart racer as controls or track design. So let's not waste any more time and determine which is the king of the cart. Now I don't put too much stock in influence, but I know that somebody is going to comment that Mario Kart 64 is obviously the best just because it came out first, so just take the point and sit back down. When it comes to the visuals and the presentation, the opening to a game is always important as the first impression is what sticks with the player the most. Now the opening to Mario Kart is simple, but it does function. But CTR fares a lot better. Fasten your seatbelts for another Naughty Dog creation. It has a title that mirrors the other Naughty Dog Crash games. And I love how Crash is just being assaulted by the letters when it opens, truly demonstrating just how wacky Crash is as a character. And then we have Diddy Kong Racing. The intro shows you straight away that there are multiple vehicles to choose from, and it gives you a roll call of all the characters and that music. If I was judging this on the opening minute, Diddy Kong Racing would win hands down for Charm alone. I have this big stupid grin on my face every time I see it, and it's great. Mario Kart 64 turns 3D models into sprites using the same silicon graphic system that's used in Donkey Kong Country. They look sublime in a 2D platformer, but next to 3D backgrounds, they look very primitive. The colour palette is really bright and vibrant, the textures and fonts on the other hand almost look like an alpha build. I can only imagine that if this game had a little bit longer in development, they could have made it look a lot more impressive. And if you think I'm nitpicking, look no further than Diddy Kong Racing. It uses fully 3D models with only the wheels being used for sprites. Even sprites like balloons, bananas, elements in the trees are textured seamlessly in with the environment, being hard to distinguish. Everything in DKR looks simplistic from the models to the environments, but it works. It has like a childlike quality to its presentation, which feels almost nostalgic for a game that I've never played. Now CTR was on a 32-bit system compared to the N64's, I don't know, it's anyone's guess. However, the PS1 had an advantage of significantly more space to play with. CTR manages to somehow be completely different from the mainline games, 
but replicates the Crash aesthetic perfectly. You could say the same about Mario Kart, but this goes one step further. The crates, Wampa Fruit, items look identical. Look, they even brought back the time crates from Warped. The models when winning a race are the same from the main games. In the races though, just don't look at them too close because, oof. I mean, look at Fake Crash. He has more teeth than face. In regards to the environment, there is no corners cut as far as I can tell. All 3D models with tons of detail in how they're textured. I think DKR has the best character models, but Crash has the most varied environments and the best textures. It's close between CTR and DKR, but I have to give a slight edge to CTR for its perfect franchise synergy and its more detailed environments. What have I got? Despite all being kart racers, they feel very different to play. First of all, CTR has played the controller, whereas the other two are played with a trident? An alien's dong? Yeah, I do not like this at all. I don't even know what I'm looking at, to be completely honest. Despite this, Mario Kart 64's controls are responsive. However, it seems very sluggish when turning. The only way to get around corners successfully is by drifting or braking. Drifting is easy to use, yet you seem to turn both too tight whilst drifting quite wide. This is really hard to explain, so look at Diddy Kong Racing. When you drift, it has like a natural curve to it that's easy to cancel. It feels a lot more comfortable. In Mario Kart, you're at such an angle when drifting that it's cumbersome to get out of. You could say braking is always a great way to help speeding around corners, which is the case if your name isn't Mario Kart 64. So when you're braking, you slow down, but it doesn't seem to affect how much you turn. Now, how it works in most games, even later Mario Kart games, is upon tapping the brake button, you'll quickly be able to reorientate yourself quite easily, making it a useful way to get around those tight turns. Now, when it comes to Diddy Kong Racing, it just feels right. Everything is super responsive. Even when using a boost pad, it's never arduous to manoeuvre. When it comes to other vehicles, the plane is excellent to pilot. You can even do a drift of sorts when flying. And the hovercraft, definitely the weakest of the three, but it's still fun to drive. Instead of doing a drift, you'll hop on a spot, which helps you do tight turns. Also, the hovercraft can travel on water, which creates an interesting dynamic for the driving. Now, CTR is very different. So driving normally around a track will get you nowhere. It's all about boosting as much as you can. Whilst in a drift, if you press the opposite bumper, you'll do a boost. Now, if you chain three boosts together, it will result in a longer, more powerful boost. Another way to obtain a boost is by jumping off a ramp by pressing the drift button without turning. This will make you do a little hop. This is hard to get used to, but it's so satisfying. It feels so tight and it's so much fun to pull off. It's very dynamic and you get into a rhythm that never gets old and the speeds you can get to are ridiculous. Now, which of the three have the best controls? Well, it's very close between two of these games. You can probably guess which ones. Now, I love, love, love how CTR handles, but for the ease of picking up and the fact that you have three completely different vehicles that feel complementary to the kart racing, I've got to give a slight edge to Diddy Kong Racing. Uh -huh. Now controls are important, but that don't mean Diddy if the race courses look like an MC Escher painting. Racing tracks need to be constructed in a way, even if you've never played the stage before, you can use your skill to get through it. They need to be simple and easy to understand, like Mario Kart's earlier tracks. Rather than overly complex and filled with, as an auteur of English language like me would say, fucking bullshit. Now how is that fair? Sorry I didn't have enough time to react with your shitty draw distance. Where'd these fucking moles come from? Oh no, anything but Rainbow Road. Oh. That's it. How do these go from nice romp to hell fuck so quickly? Some of these stage hazards are obnoxious. It's hard enough to try and stay in first place when everyone's so close they can count your fucking pixels, which I'll get to later, don't worry. In Mario Kart 8, yeah, these tracks are stellar, but yeah, in this, not about that life. Aesthetically, they're unique with interesting concepts. 
However, most of the time, I just want to put antifungal cream on Toad so he'd leave me alone. You literal bell end. Now with Dingle Dong Racing, these tracks... <sighs> these tracks are awesome. I'm sorry for snapping at you, Diddy. Mario just makes me sick. All of these tracks are split into certain themes. Dinosaurs, ice levels, space, etc. The multiple vehicles help them feel fresh, but even removed from that, they are distinct whilst being themed in a similar way, which is an impressive feat. To my recollection, there are also a lack of bottomless pits, annoying stage hazards, and there are even some alternate routes to get you ahead. I would have liked to see more secret shortcuts and such, but the only reason I have those expectations is because I've been playing CTR. Crash Team Racing has diverse levels, littered with risky shortcuts that reward the player for impeccable driving. Some seem a bit too impossible, regardless, getting through these courses is still very doable with great driving and it never feels anger inducing. There are stage hazards aplenty, though they seem to be placed in a way that's easy to react to. I love how all of these are themed around a certain character in the game, Tiny Arena, Engine Labs, Cortex's Castle. You could say the same about Mario, but honestly who looks at this and goes, oh yeah that's a Toad level. Wario Stadium though, can confirm it is about Wario. When it comes to the best tracks, I just find the ones in CTR so interesting. I'm always finding new corners to cut, chaining boosts and going at insane speeds, and they all feel unique. Diddy Kong Racing comes close, but CTR takes the cake. What have I got? You know what these driving games lack? Excessive violence. Ah yes, the power up. A hallmark of any kart racer. You drive over an item box and use whatever you obtain to get an advantage. The vast majority of these are reskinned across the three titles, but there are more differences than you might think. Diddy Kong Racing has specific items tied to different coloured balloons, unlike its contemporaries that give you a random object to utilise. The randomness adds an element of balance. Everybody gets to feel underwhelmed when they get a banana peel. It does add an element of excitement not knowing what you might get, and Nintendo loved this so much that they added a random element to all their Mario Kart games, especially Mario Kart Tour. I sold my kidney for this. Knowing which power-ups you're obtaining in Diddy Kong Racing does prepend a facet of strategy. For example, going after missiles when you're in first place would be unwise, but going for a boost might be the optimal choice. Holding on to these will also grant a greater reward, as obtaining the same power-up twice results in an upgrade. Do you use missiles now and potentially miss, or wait for an upgraded heat-seeking variant? It's all up to the player. Items can be upgraded in CTR by collecting 10 Wumpa Fruit, though this can only be done once as opposed to Diddy Kong Racing, where you can do it twice. No such upgrades are apparent in Mario Kart 64, though this is counteracted with more versatility. The majority can be held behind the player to protect them, or in some cases, shells can orbit around the player not only protecting them, but any drivers that will approach will get hit by them. This is a method that I actually found more useful than just throwing the shells. Disregarding the iconography of the power-ups in Mario Kart, there is still a varied selection, being useful in almost all situations. CTR also has a varied selection, but most of them are the same as the ones in Mario Kart 64. It does lack originality apart from a few exceptions, which makes it become one of the less engaging aspects of CTR. Diddy Kong Racing's biggest shortcoming is the lack of power-ups. There's only five, with missiles and boosts usually being the obvious choice. The originality is commendable, but there is a reason Mario Kart's items are usually copied, and that's because there's no point fixing what isn't broke. The biggest appeal to most kart racers, and what will ultimately sell your game, is the character roster. Now I know what you're thinking, it's got to be Mario Kart, he's got the most iconic characters, and yes it does have Wario and Donkey Kong, I will give you that, but that is not how I'm judging this category. All three games have a base roster of 8 playable characters. Surprisingly though, not a single one of these titles are just a simple model swap. Mario Kart 64 has its roster separated into weight classes, but to be honest I didn't really notice a difference, 
Though I am aware that if they're too different, you might not be able to pick your favourite character because they might not control very well. CTR has its cast split into races that excel in either speed, acceleration, handling, with a few being balanced across the experience. This is where I do notice a difference. Any character will work, but if you're going to be a pro at the game, you want to choose a speed character. I'm very much in the camp where I love having a roster where there's strategy in which to choose. Very much like Diddy Kong Racing. Every character has a unique stat based on weight, acceleration, turning and top speed. With characters like Banjo feeling like handling a brick, but then if I choose Tip Top, he handles great, but then has terrible speed. Struggling with a race might be as simple as changing a character better suited for the track design. For example, I only beat this race because I chose the Rooster, who is one of Diddy Kong Racing's unlockable characters. There are two, the aforementioned Rooster Drumstick and TT the Clock. I got Drumstick, but not TT. Look, he's got the best stats in the game, but I have to beat his time on every single track and I just have not got that kind of time. You think I could do that and then go to Crash Team Racing and do the exact same thing to unlock Entropy? Can't believe you beat my time on this track. Now you'll face Oxide's best time and I doubt you can beat that. Yeah, that was never gonna happen. Though to give myself some credibility, I did get the Platinum Trophy for the remake of CTR, so I am at least somewhat competent at racing games. Other than Entropy, you'll unlock four characters once you beat this cup race. Fake Crash you can unlock from this cup race, and Penta Penguin you can unlock with a cheat code, who still has the placeholder dialogue in. Penguin Ye one With 15 characters, this has the largest roster by far, and it doesn't feel like anybody is missing from the series, apart from Torna, but I'm pretty sure if she was in a cart, she wouldn't be able to see the steering wheel. I think with the amount of unlockable characters there are, the uniqueness in the stat differences, it's hard not to give the point to CTR. What have I got? If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know I love music in video games. It's an integral part of the experience that will stick with me long after the controller is put down. Some of my favourite music is from the Crash Bandicoot series, and the original trilogy composer Josh Mansell returned for the Crash Team Racing soundtrack. I don't know if this is controversial, but I do think it is the weakest Crash soundtrack he's composed. It's not a lacklustre effort, not at all but I find a lot of the compositions too similar. There are definitely standouts that I like, but for the most part, it's a forgettable turnout that I do not remember long after I've finished playing. Kenta Nagata composed Mario Kart 64. Unfortunately, there isn't a different track for every single race like the other two, but it's definitely grown on me as I've listened to it. Some of it doesn't seem quite high tempo enough for a racing game, and subsequent remasters of the soundtrack added a lot more life to these songs. Now, if you put a gun to my head and said, I'm going to pull the trigger, you little bitch. Also, who's your favourite video game composer? I'd say, do it, you fucking coward. Also, it's probably the Donkey Kong Country composer, David Wise. Now, those were incredible, atmospheric, rich tracks. So could he show his versatility with an energetic kart racer? Well, I'll answer that with a Diddy Kong Racing music montage.
it is said that the best, maybe only way to experience a kart racer is with a friend. The memories we share can make even the worst games enjoyable. Now my friendship circle is about as empty as my fridge after a late night sob, but luckily I'm engaged. So I roped in my fiance, who is heavily nostalgic for Mario Kart 64. She hated it, for all the reasons I don't like it, due to the controls, the level design, and its biggest flaw which I will get to. All three of these titles let you partake in races together, but the enjoyment hinges on how much you enjoyed the other aspects of the games. I wouldn't say that adding another person really alters my feelings on them that much. However, I had to play the multiplayer on original hardware instead of emulation, which for CTR was fantastic. To play it on the N64, I went down to the gaming cafe in Norwich, which was a great place to visit. When I played Diddy Kong Racing and Mario Kart 64, I had to use the world's worst controller. I can't stand it. With grips made for free arms and an analog stick that's as loose as your mum, my enjoyment was substantially hampered. Entering races is not all these have to offer, as all three games have battle modes. As stated previously, I think Mario Kart has the best power-ups, so consequentially, it has the most gratifying battle mode. The maps are simple, but there is so much fun to be had within that simplicity. I think CTR fares similarly, with you being able to actually toggle which power-ups you use in battle, though the maps aren't as multi-layered, and therefore not as interesting. Diddy Kong Racing is its own can of worms. There are multiple battle modes, death matches in cars or hovercrafts, a level where you can get bananas and then take them back to your base, a level where you can collect eggs hoping that they hatch before somebody else nicks them. I do commend the variety, but the enjoyment hinges on the power-ups and the maps. With Diddy Kong Racing having the least favourable power-ups, the battle modes do fall flat, which you can't even experience without unlocking them first. Racing was the most entertaining in CTR, battles were the most entertaining in Mario Kart 64, notwithstanding, I did loathe the racing in Mario Kart. So having a controller that both me and my fiance could enjoy, I've got to say, CTR is the optimal choice for engaging multiplayer. What have I got? Accessibility is not a topic I usually care too much about. Nevertheless, kart races are built with the mainstream appeal in mind. It shouldn't be overwhelming for a new player to pick up and enjoy. On the other hand, it is important for a game to make veteran players feel like they're being challenged, offering a balanced difficulty curve. Mario Kart is often lauded as the poster child of easy to pick up and play gameplay. It's simple to understand, you can choose which speed the carts go at, ensuring that there's time to get accustomed with the tracks. I wouldn't say there's much of a difficulty curve, as the cups can be done in any order, though there is at least the choice to go at your own pace. So why do I despise this game with every inch of my being? Well, there is an epidemic that plagues most kart racers, and that epidemic is rubber banding. Now rubber banding refers to the computer players on the track. They're programmed in a way that disallows you from getting too far ahead or getting too far behind, adding a dynamic difficulty. Now in concept, this allows even the worst players to not fall too far behind. In Mario Kart 64, the execution is horrendous. I am playing to the best of my ability, and upon getting hit by an item, I get overtaken by most of the other drivers, which is pretty standard. I can't fault the game for that. But, and this is a big but, I will hurl so much abuse at Peach that she will start another Me Too movement, but like the T-1000, she just refuses to stay down. No matter what you do, the AI drivers will remain on your ass, even if you're driving flawlessly. This is so bad that it flat out ruins any fun I might have. It's also in CTR, though it is nowhere near as aggravating. It is very much possible to get fairly far ahead with my skill alone. Diddy Kong Racing 
has no rubber banding. Now this might be a contention for some, because if you fall too far behind, you probably won't catch up and therefore might as well just restart. Yet for me, I would much rather win on my own merit, with my own skill, than have the game try and compensate for my lack of skill. Furthermore, Diddy Kong Racing also has a gentle difficulty curve that pushes the player without alienating them. Similar sentiments could be said about CTR, though its boost mechanics, as well as other systems, can be hard to understand for a new player. I asked my fiance to play all three of these games, with CTR definitely being the one that she struggled to come to grips with the most. I believe Diddy Kong Racing is the hardest to complete, but it's also the easiest to pick up, so for striking the perfect balance between both the hardcore and the casual crowd, I've got to commend DKR. You won first prize. If all your game has to offer is just driving around the same tracks over and over again, it's going to get pretty boring pretty quickly. So what do these titles have to offer to keep players coming back? I've mentioned the battle modes, Grand Prix and time trials, things that all three of these games provide. But in Mario Kart 64, you can beat every single race on 150cc to unlock Mirror Mode, which also gives you a different title screen. Wow, that is impressive. Now if you look at the other two, all they have is this side mode called Adventure, with a story, hub worlds, unlockable characters, boss fights, collectibles, alternate gameplay modes. <sighs> Hang on, I've kept it under wraps until now, but yes, a full adventure mode with cutscenes and a story. Both admittedly as simple as just kind of hanging out, then aliens. You are cast into a hub world, which you're tasked with completing four races, followed by a boss fight, then another set of levels, then another boss fight and so on. These rival fights put you one on one, with the competitor throwing multiple items to slow you down. This can get so obnoxious, with me using one power up at a time as per usual, with the bosses, especially in CTR, just bombarding you with potions and TNT. Thankfully, not all encounters in Diddy Kong Racing have this issue, often avoiding stage hazards instead. Furthermore, the boss fights are not only unique, not being kart drivers, but also the arenas that you fight them in are completely original, as opposed to CTR, where they reused old maps. Upon defeating said bosses, there are other challenges to do, both have you collect silver coins or CTR letters, relic races that come straight out of Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, or harder rematches against bosses in Diddy Kong Racing. There are also additional challenges. The battle modes are reused in DKR's story mode, while CTR reuses the battle arenas for collecting crystal challenges. Upon completing all the races and defeating the final boss, both games end with a tease to a secret ending, with Diddy Kong Racing's fake out being way more sinister than it has any right to be. Upon getting 100% in Crash, you're given the opportunity to rematch Nitrous Oxide, the main villain of the game, culminating in him finally being defeated. Getting 101% can be obtained by getting at least gold on all of the time relics. This will give you the scrapbook, which has behind the scenes pictures of the whole Crash Bandicoot series until that point. On the whole, I was extremely satisfied with the single player content of CTR. Now DKR also ends in a final rematch, but not before going to a secret world in space. Including some of the best levels the game has to offer, so not going for 100% will definitely end up in you missing out. After defeating the final boss, the day is saved, with a tease of sequel that will never happen. Diddy Kong Racing is a fantastic self-contained adventure, being an experience I'd easily play again. When it comes to which has the best content, it's obviously out of these two. Playing Mario Kart on your own is like going to an orgy just to have a wank. At that point, why would you even bother? It's really neck and neck, though I'd say the extra world, as well as the better boss encounters, pushes me a little bit more towards Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing! Now, as you can see, we're at an impasse two games with the same final score. 
I'm not one to puss out, so I'm adding a final category. And don't worry, it's a simple one. Which one did I enjoy the most? I will say this about Mario Kart. It doesn't hold up. I'd say Double Dash onwards is a safe bet. Now, down to which of these I prefer the most. If you asked me which of these I'd rather play in its current form, I'd say Diddy Kong Racing. But only because CTR has had a fantastic remake that replaces it. Now, do I think DKR is a better game? Ugh, it's so annoying. Both of these car races are incredible, but I said I'd choose, and I have to say I prefer ever so slightly CTR. The boost mechanics are cathartic to master, the level design is a joy, and also at the end of the day, it's Crash Bloody Bandicoot. Diddy Kong Racing, I can't understate, is amazing. Just don't play it on original hardware. So Crash Team Racing was the winner of this epic showdown. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please don't be a dick in the comments, this is all my opinion, and I'm an idiot. This was a long, difficult video to make, so thank you so much for watching the whole thing. I appreciate every single one of you. If you enjoyed this format of video, I'm happy to do it again, but probably after a very long sleep. I'm hoping to get to 300 subscribers, so if you want to check out my other content, please do. But more importantly, just play these games if you haven't, because you might come across an unforgettable experience. Thank you for your time, thank you for not getting mad over any of my opinions.